Hello and welcome into the 3D. Today we are going to create a coffee mug in Autodesk Maya, but this YouTube channel is not limited with that. If you want to learn 3D modeling, animation, visual effects or anything related to games art, go and click on the subscribe button now. Before we start, we should always think what kind of object that we will create and which polygon primitive is suitable for that. For a coffee mug, a cylinder can be a good choice to start with. So, if you go to your shelf, under poly modeling, you can click on the cylinder icon or you can go under create, polygon primitives and create a cylinder. Once you create the object, go to the channel box which is on the right side of your viewport. Let's set the scale x to 4, scale y to 4.5 and scale z to 4 again. Since 4.5 is the height of the object, we can set the translate y to 4.5 and it will snap the bottom of the object to our grid. Now select the object, hold right click and switch to the vertex mode. Before we select the vertices, let's press 4 on the keyboard to enable the wireframe mode of the object. Now press Q or get the selection tool from the toolbar and create a selection box by holding left click and select the bottom vertices of the object. Once they are selected, press R or get the scale tool from the toolbar. Then squeeze them in by holding from the middle point. Once you get the similar shape, press 5 to enable shaded view. Then hold right click and switch to the face mode. Let's create a selection box around the object and if you are using the default selection settings, it should select all the faces. Now, while we are holding control, create another selection box for the middle parts of the object but this time, since we are holding control, it will deselect that area and keep the top and bottom faces selected only. Press the delete button and delete the selected faces. So, if you follow the steps without any mistake, you should have the middle faces only. Now, hold right click and switch to the object mode. Then by holding shift and right click, you can extrude the object. Once you select that option, it will open a small panel. Let's find and set the local translate Z to minus 0.4. As soon as we press enter, you will see that the object turned into black, the faces supposed to be outside are flipped inside, and it is because we use a minus value to set the local translate Z. Since the faces are reversed, we should select the object by holding right click and switch to the object mode. Go under display and select the reverse option. So, if you ever face a similar problem, this is how you can fix it. Now, let's grab the multicut tool from the shelf, or you can go under mesh tools and select the multicut tool. While we are using the multicut tool, if you hold Ctrl and Shift at the same time, you can snap this tool around the object. So, find the middle of the faces by setting this to 50% and cut it. We can do the same thing for the bottom part. Hold Ctrl and Shift at the same time, set this to 10% and cut it. Now move to the top part, set it to 90% and cut it from the top. Great! This is how you can use the multicut tool and this tool is useful in most of the cases. Let's repeat the same progress for inner faces as well. Hold Ctrl and Shift at the same time and cut it from the middle of the object. Then go to the top part, hold Ctrl and Shift, set this to 90 and cut it. Finally, let's go to the bottom part, hold Ctrl and Shift and cut it from this point. Ok, since we are done with the multicut tool, let's switch to the selection tool by pressing Q or you can select that from the toolbar. Hold right click and enable the face mode and we need to zoom in to the bottom part of the object. Let's select one of the faces on this row and while holding shift, I want you to double click to the face next to that. As you can see, it will select all the faces in that row by using that technique. Now, press delete on your keyboard since we don't need them anymore. Let's zoom in a bit more, hold right click and enable the edge mode. While we are in this mode, Let's double click to the edge on this row and it will select all the edges on that row. 
So now, while these edges are selected, we will use the bridge tool from the shelf. Or you can go under edit mesh and use the bridge tool. Now we have closed the gap, but we have created an end gone. And if you know about topology, you can easily understand this is a problem. If you don't, it is simply a face with more than four edges. So to fix it, hold right click, go to the face mode, select the face, go under edit mesh and select the poke tool. As you can see, it has created a connection point and all the vertices on the face is connected to that. Great, we are done with that part. Hold right click and go to the edge mode again. This time, double click to an edge on this row, make sure all the edges on that row are selected, then hold shift and right click at the same time and extrude the edges. On this panel, let's set the thickness to something around minus 0.2. And then set the offset to something around maybe 0.05. Okay, let's click to an empty space to deselect the edges. Now go to the edge row and double click to one of the edges. It should select the whole edge row. Use the bridge tool. This time I will use it from my shelf and it will fill the gap. Great. Hold right click again. Go to the face mode, select this face, make sure you haven't selected any other faces. You can control it by pressing 4 on your keyboard and just check if you select any other faces by mistake. Press 5 for shaded view, go under edit mesh and use the poke tool again to avoid angons. Now we can start adding a bit more details, hold right click and enable the edge mode. Double click to select this edge row, then by holding shift, double click to this edge row, and finally, let's select this edge row by holding shift and double click. So if you selected these three edge rows, hold shift, right click and bevel the edge. Once we do that, it will bevel the selected edge, but on this pop-up, let's set the segments to 2. Great. That was everything for the bottom part of the object. Hold right click, go to the object mode and deselect the object to see what we have done so far. I know it is still low poly, but we will smooth the object once we have finished the details. So go to the top part, hold right click and enable the edge mode again. This time double click to select this edge row, then hold shift and double click to select this one and finally hold shift and double click to the inner bottom edge row. Press 4 to make sure you have selected the correct edge. If you select the ones that I'm showing you, you can press 5 for the shaded view. As you can guess, we will hold shift and right click to bevel the edges. Once you do that, it will bevel the selected edge, so set the segments to 2 again. That's great! Finally, we will create a holder for this. So, to create the holder, let's get the multicut tool from the shelf and while holding Ctrl and Shift, set this part to 80% and cut it. Let's move to the bottom, hold Ctrl and Shift at the same time, set this to 20% and cut it. Ok, now we can press Q for the selection tool and hold right click and enable the face mode. Then go to the top face row that we have created and select a face from there. While holding shift, let's follow the same row in the vertical direction and select this face as well. So now you can go under edit mesh, find the bridge tool, but this time click this little box to open the tool settings. Go under edit, reset the settings, then change the bridge type to smooth bar plus curve, change the directions to custom and keep it plus plus and then set divisions to 5. Click on bridge and see what it does. Great! As you can see we have created the handle and we are almost done with the object. Now hold right click and go to the object mode. Simply hold shift and right click 
and smooth the object. In the small panel, set the divisions to 2. By smoothing the object, we have increased the polygon number of the object, but it gives us more details. Let's deselect the object to see the result. Before we finish, let's go to the outliner, and if you are using a version higher than 2023, it will create a curve for us. If we delete this curve, it will break the shape. So to get rid of this, select the object, go under modify and reset the transformations. So the values on the channel box will go back to default. After that, go under edit, delete by type and delete the history of the object. If you've done these steps, you can select the curve and delete it without breaking the shape of the object. To keep things organized, double click to the mesh in the outliner and rename it as mug underscore mesh. Once we do that, we can go under file and save the scene or you can export to selection. Then change the file type to FBX. Let's see. We can keep the settings as it is change the name as mac underscore fbx and just export to selection. So, in this tutorial, we have covered most of the common tools that we will need to create an object in Maya. If you like this tutorial, please comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching, I see you guys next time.